Hey, I have a full calendar here. It's spring going into summer. It's peak event season in Somerville. Let's just get right to this, shall we? The first week in May, it's actually not the first week in May, and I don't know why I said that. May 12th through 20th is Bay State Bike Week. Um, there are events all month long, so I'm not sure why they don't call it Bay State Bike Month. Very good question. At any rate, there's a ton of events to do, and we're just gonna ha highlight a few here that have been provided to us by the good people at the Somerville Bicycle Committee. Um, you can check out all of them at baystatebikeweek.org. The Rite of Silence takes place at Boston City Hall Wednesday, May 16th at 6.45 p.m. and it commemorates people killed while riding bikes. Meet at City Hall in Boston to ride silently through the streets. The south side of City Hall is where you should meet up near the statue of Bill Russell. Bike to Work Day between Somerville and Boston City Hall takes place Friday, May 18th during the morning commute times. Join a convoy starting near you and bike to Boston City Hall again. More info about this event is available on the City of Boston's website. And you can also find Somerville specific convoy origin starts uh, at uh, Davis Square and Porter Squares although Porter Square is technically Cambridge, but you get the idea. It's a great way to bike to Boston if you've never done it before. I love doing that all the time in the spring and summer. Uh, so do it. The Mystic River Herring Run and Paddle Bike Tour at the Blessing of the Bay Boathouse, whew, that's a mouthful, takes place Saturday, May 19th at 11 a.m. The Mystic River Watershed Association, a really good organization, is putting together uh, their annual day of events, which include various foot races and paddling events, and a tour of the Mystic by bike, of course, which is why it's listed with these Bike Week events. The bike tour begins at 11.15 a.m., and you do need to bring your own bike. The Somerville Bike Committee will be tabling there, so say hello to them and ask some questions about bike infrastructure. So, again, that was just a small portion of the uh, events going on all through May. If you want to check out all of them, go to baystatebikeweek.org uh, and just find out, you know, anything that interests you, stuff that's near, near you, stuff that's far away from you, go check it out. And if you're interested in learning more about the Somerville Bicycle Committee, visit their website at somervillebikes.org. A new group art exhibit featuring more than 50 artists called Secret Gardens runs from May 14th through June 17th at the Nave Gallery in Teal Square. Curated by Tori Costa, Secret Gardens revels in the beauty and wonder of botany and secret gardens and explores how botanical imagery can symbolize ideas, attributes, morality lessons, and more. Reception is Saturday, May 19th from 3 to 5 p.m. Gallery hours are Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 5. More info is at thenavegallery.org. I got a little ahead of myself there, apologies. Summer means Somerville Arts Council events, and that means a chat with Nina Eichner. Um, here's, what, here's what she had to say when we had a chance to catch up. And we're back with Nina Eichner from the Somerville Arts Council. Always a pleasure to have you in it's here, so Nina. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. So May and June, totally chill months for you, right? Yeah. Practically like nothing going really on. Really relaxed. It's a just, good feeling. Just kidding. <laughs> this is like peak event season for Somerville yeah, Arts Council. Yeah, it is. Events. It's true. So let's get right into it. What What's coming up for um, May through early June? Yeah, so we're really excited that it's finally gotten warm, and that means it's event season. So the first thing coming up is Porch Fest, um, one of our favorites. That is on Saturday, May 12th. And <laughs> we'll double ooh, check that. <laughs> yeah, Saturday, May 12th. And um, this year, so Porch Fest always is 12 to 6 p.m and it's a two hour um, section in each part of the city. Mm -hmm. So it's two hours and then it goes to the next section. So there's kind of a wave of music throughout the city. And in past years we've started in East Somerville and gone to West Somerville. Mm -hmm. And this year we're doing the opposite. So okay. we're switching the order of the festival. 12 to 2 p.m. there'll be music in West Somerville. 
two to four there'll be music in central Somerville, and four to six there'll be music in east Somerville. So we're kind of having the wave go west to east and ending um, right in east Somerville, which will be really exciting. Oh, nice. Yeah. Why, why did you change it up this year? Um, we just thought it'd be good to try a different order, kind of see if that affects crowds, see if that affects kind of who participates, mm. and also we always like to show love to East Somerville, so that'll be great. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So is that Mother's Day weekend? That is Mother's Day weekend. Right. Bring your mom to Porch Bring Fest. Bring your mom to Porch Fest. Mom's everybody. at Porch Fest. That, we should start that. Yeah. That'd be good. The Moms of Porch Fest. Moms of Porch <laughs> Fest. Um, um, yeah, so it'll be great. There's always, you know, several hundred bands, all genres, whatever you're looking for, there's a, perch, a Porch Fest playing it. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So that's May 12th, and then the following weekend, May 19th, uh, we're collaborating with Somerville Media Center yes. on the Cinema Somerville Short Film Festival. Awesome. Yeah. That'll be, that's a good time. It's really so, fun. Yeah, that's uh, curated uh, movies by summer villains um, that may or may not be about Somerville, but um, just I think we went kind of loose with the theme this year. Yeah, we decided that the theme, we decided on the theme of voices, and we really wanted to feature people who have unique voices, so local filmmakers making short films that have a particular voice or a particular perspective they wanted to share. And mm -hmm. I'm really excited. We just um, released the um, list of artists and films we'll be showing, um, which is up on the Sunville Media Center website and I think it'll be a really great time. And weather permitting, this will be outside in Union Square Plaza. Um, last year we had rain, but the year before we had great weather for it. And it's really fun to just sit outside and watch some movies. Yeah, outdoor movies in yeah. the summer. Really so May nice. 19th, that'll May be 19th. great. Yep. Um, cool. Yeah. What else do you have going on? And then we head into June, and the first weekend in June is a really jam-packed weekend. Mm -hmm. There'll be two amazing events. Um, on June 2nd, um, we will have the Big Gay Dance Party back for the second year in a row. Um, last year cool. was a huge success and it really showed that the LGBT community in Somerville is interested in looking for um, queer events in the city and we wanted to have something for Pride Month. We'd never done um, a gay event in Somerville sponsored by the city except for the flag raising and we thought it was well time to have that. So. Um, we were both there last year, we yeah. had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, um, so, so get out there. Good dancing. Good dancing. We'll have some drag performances again this year. We'll have some local LGBTQ service organizations that you can talk with and learn about the resources they're providing and um, really great DJ, and so it'll be great. Cool. So that's June 2nd, uh, 530 to 830, and then the next day, June 3rd, is East Somerville Carnival. Um, which is the June Summer Streets Festival. It happens on Lower Broadway in East Somerville. Um, it includes two, sh two stages of music, mm. lots of um, food from all over the world represented in East Somerville, um, interactive kids activities, um, lots of local businesses and arts organizations, and um, it kicks off with a parade, and that'll be lots of fun as well, and that's 2 to 6 p.m. on Lower Broadway. Is that the first Summer Streets event for the year? Yes, it kicks off our four-part series of Summer Streets in East Somerville and it's always a lot of fun and a really diverse event and brings out lots of families and people of all ages. Cool. Yeah. And then and then you just chill after that, And right? then we chill. You know, there's lots more <laughs> coming up in June and July, but I think we, won't, we don't want to overwhelm people right no, now. Yeah. So we'll get to it another time. This is, this is enough. Um, so I want to thank you again, Nina, for coming by yeah. and giving us an update on events to look out for yeah. that are produced by the Somerville Arts Council. And um, if you want any more information, you can go on our website, SomervilleArtsCouncil.org. Um, if you go to the Arts Union series on our webpage, that lists all of our Arts Union festivals for this year, which include Cinema Somerville and the Big Gay Dance Party, as well as a lot of other events coming up later in the summer and fall. And you can check out Summer Streets and all the other events we have going on. Great. All right, get out there. The Big Mouth Off Mass Mouth Storytelling Championship takes place Thursday, May 10th at 8 p.m. Who will win this year's title of Greater Boston's Best Storyteller? Join Mass Mouth for the 2017-2018 Storytelling Slam season finale, The Big Mouth Off. To find out, after advancing through quarter and semifinal competitions at Trident Booksellers and Club Passim, 
10 outstanding local storytellers deliver true first-person stories that are funny, heartbreaking, and everything in between. The winner, selected by a panel of notable guest judges, will be named this year's Big Mouth Off champion. All proceeds benefit Mass Mouth, a Boston-based nonprofit organization that promotes the timeless art of storytelling. Funds support annual programming, including story slams, showcases, workshops, and special events. Tickets are available at thesomervilletheater.com. Tuesday, May 15th, Simpsons Trivia returns to Once Somerville. Did it ever go away? Watch classic episodes of the series projected from 7 to 8, and then go head to head with other Springfield fanatics and pin pals to embiggen your Simpson knowledge. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two about this soon to be longest running scripted TV show. No fee to play, but they do use the NPR model of guilt tripping you into putting a couple of dollars in the More Simpsons Fund bucket. So put a few bucks in there, come on. Which is used to acquire future prizes and auction items. The Price is Right, demystifying the value of your work takes place Wednesday, May 16th at 6.30 p.m. at the Center for the Arts of the Armory. How should I price my artwork? Should I give it away? Should I price it at $500? Does anything have value anymore? What's this worth? Is anything worth anything? These questions and more will be answered at this event. As artists, this can be two familiar phrases and two common scenarios. Your painting is done, but what's next? Pricing can be daunting. To determine the value of a piece is subjective and difficult hurdle in selling your work. At this panel discussion, industry art professionals help demystify how pricing works and provide strategies on how to price your own art. So come on down and join, join the Somerville Arts Council for the Price is Right. And more information is at somervilleartscouncil.org. Los Van Van performs Sunday, May 20th at the Somerville Theater. They're considered one of the most important and influential bands in the history of 20th and 21st century Cuban pop music. There were primarily two Cuban groups experimenting with mixing pop, funk, and rock and soul with their native traditions. One of those two was Iraquere, and the other far more lasting band was Los Van Van. Tickets start at $50 and are available at SomervilleTheater.com. Artists from Outside the Line Studio will be displaying their work in June at the Central Somerville Library in an exhibit titled Summer Villain, which plays with a dichotomy of good versus evil, which are concepts that are relative to one's culture, heritage, and moral compass. Artwork will be displayed in pairs, blurring the lines between good and evil so that the viewer determines who's the hero and who's the villain. Outside the Line Studio is an inclusive, nonprofit, alternative, arts-based day program collectively run by artists for individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities. OTL artists live in Somerville, Medford, and Greater Boston and have displayed their artworks and exhibits in and around Boston and New York. Opening reception for this exhibit is Tuesday, June 5th at 1245 p.m. and more information is available at somervillepubliclibrary.org. Spring and summer definitely means farmers markets and I had a chance to talk with Tiffany Lung from Union Square Main Streets about the Union Square Farmers Market. Here's what she had to say. Hi, I'm here with uh, Tiffany Learn, who is the Program and Market Manager in Union Square Main Street. Welcome, Tiffany. Thanks for having me. So what do you do in your position as Market Manager? It's a good question, actually. <laughs> um, I am kind of the creator of the farmer's market, so everything from selecting the vendors for the season to working with the city um, for health permits, parking, and making sure that the market happens all together. Wow, so you do that every week? Every week leading up to the market day. And then when the market is open, I'm kind of the info booth, um, the person that you want to ask in terms of which vendors are there that week, um, when can they expect another vendor, what's happening, what's new, what produce are going on. So kind of the brains, I would say. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, so what is new this year at the, at the market? Yeah, great question again. Um, we have two produce vendors. We're really excited. Last year we had six produce vendors, so we've upped our game. And Brookford Farm, who has always been a cheese and cheese and meat vendor, is now coming as a full-fledged vendor. Hmm. So meat, cheese, and produce. Um, they're certified organic, and they're located in Concord, New Hampshire. 
and our second produce vendor is Asawaga Farm, mm -hmm. and I'm particularly excited about this vendor. They bought their land in 2016, and they bought it as a just a hay field, and they're transforming it completely into a productive land. Wow! And they're getting certified organic um, as of May 2018, and they're specializing in Japanese varieties and mushrooms. So it's a really um, great niche and we're excited to have them. And they're also based out of Maine or are they Massachusetts? They are in Connecticut, in Connecticut. Um, Putnam, Connecticut, um, just on the border of the Connecticut and Massachusetts state line. Um, but they're great and they're gonna grow with the market. So we're excited. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so you had mentioned that um, your vendors rotate mm -hmm. week by week. Yeah. Um, so how can uh, anybody that wants to go to see their favorite vendor, how can they find out in advance um, how to do that? Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be three ways. So if you sign up for our newsletter um, on unionsquaremain.org, you can sign up for our farmer's market, which will go out every Thursday leading up to the market day. Um, and we'll give a 411 on what's the new produce that week, and also just letting customers know what vendors to expect. You can also go to that same website, and we have a page for our vendors, and each vendor has a mini bio. So you get to learn about the vendors and know when they're coming exactly, so the exact dates. Hmm. And then the third way is social media. We love Instagram and Insta Story, so you'll also find that day's um, product line. Oh, there as well. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, now, one of the, the really great things about the farmer's market is that it's a community gathering space as well. Absolutely. And over the years, that's been cultivated by the musical performances. Mm -hmm. um, so is there any, can you tell us a little behind the scenes about like how that, how that happens, how you select uh, people to perform, mm -hmm. um, how maybe a musical performer who's interested in doing it one week could be in touch with you? Absolutely. Um, our, unfortunately, we are booked for the season, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but next year for sure. We do a call. Um, we produce a Google form. We post it on social media, listservs, um, through email, and we kind of have vendors apply, or excuse me, musicians apply um, with a website sampling their music. And we're looking for kind of background music, so not loud, rock music because um, we want the vendors and the customer to be able to still converse. Totally, um, yeah. So n music that's not too loud, that can be in the background, um, adding on to the market experience. Mm. So that's kind of what we're gen aiming for when we're selecting our musicians. Um, obviously anyone that is based in Somerville is a huge plus for us and we're actually excited to have Boston Free Radio be at the farmers market three times this season. We're so, excited for that. Yeah, that's always absolutely. Fun. We've always loved having you guys, so. <laughs> Excellent. Um, now, I know the, uh, that there's major construction happening in yep. Union Square mm -hmm. uh, for the next few years. Um, so how is that going to affect the market at all? Um, we don't anticipate it have a major impact. Currently, as you can probably see from outside, okay. Eversource is digging through the Somerville, um, excuse me, the Union Square Plaza mm -hmm. parking lot. Um, but we've been told that any construction that's going on is going to happen Monday through Friday and minimal construction during the weekends and they will cover the holes with temporary asphalt. So we'll be able to still have the market up and running as usual. Um, there will be four weekends in and around the month of June where we will be relocating eight of our vendors into the parking lot just so construction can, can proceed forward. Um, and hopefully finish up quicker than usual. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're actually looking at doing a pop-up event in the month of June for those four weeks to mitigate the construction. So we are we will be opening up the market to the entire parking lot, and we're still in the works in terms of details, but sure. we're thinking of you know demonstrations from um, martial arts groups, yoga, um, chalk sidewalk painting. You know, we want to make it as almost like another park and picnic that we can open up to the community. That sounds great. So, more details to come. <laughs> All right. So stay tuned for those details and um, get out there to the Farmer's Market, which starts Mother's Day weekend. Yeah, May 12th. May 12th, mm -hmm. and which also coincides with Porch Fest. Porch Fest and the opening of Bow Market. Excellent. So lots going on that day. A lot going on. Uh, well, thank you for coming in, Tiffany. Thanks for uh, having me. I look forward to another season of the Farmer's Market. I know a lot of summer villains and people that live outside of Somerville, they look forward to that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can't wait. So, thank you. All right, <laughs> get out there.
started Bisushi in 2011, so right now it's been almost six years. I started with uh, my uncle Adolfo, so we opened, um, I remember when we opened we used to work only like four, four employees and then now we're like uh, more than 12 employees, so it was not easy. It was at the beginning, you know, any, like any business, it takes time to, you know, build the, the customers and then um, now we are, I would say, a very successful business. Well, I, well, I've been doing this for uh, over 10 years. Um, I used to work before um, this place called uh, Bluefin in Porter Square. And then, um, yeah, I learned everything, how to make sushi, how to make uh, this, like, which is tamago sweet egg. And then, um, yeah, this one actually takes, takes time to learn. I've been doing this for almost 10 years. Yeah, it's Japanese food, it's like art, you know, like everything, uh, the sushi is, it's like uh, creative, like everything is like details and then um, that's why I like it. And it's not easy at the beginning, you know, with the, with the language and then, um, and you know, it's hard to, it's not easy to get a job at the beginning, but um, well, I'm, we're here, and then um, I want to tell people like uh, you know we come to this country to I don't know how to say it, like yeah, so yeah. Y luego pues ellos tenían a un japonés trabajando en la sushi y yo digo, wow, me impresiona ver cómo, qué, cuál es la arte que él hace, que como muchos conocen el sashimi, que los nigiri son cosas muy especiales que tienes que aprender y tienes que tener un talento bárbaro para, para, para deber de hacerlo bien, ¿no? Entonces este, me entusiasmó tanto, me llamó la atención y luego pues uh, dije bueno quiero aprender a hacer sushi y le pedí la oportunidad a José y me dijo ok perfecto está bien él siempre ha sido una de esas personas que le ha gustado apoyar a, a las personas bueno a los a los hispanos siempre le ha gustado apoyarlo entonces y luego bueno perfecto me dio la oportunidad y empecé a hacer sushi y ahora Estoy ahí, haciendo switch. That does it for this edition of Some Arts. If you're an event producer and you want to see your event featured here, shoot me an email at programming at somervillemedia.org. We'll definitely include it on Somerville Media Center's Digital Community Bulletin Board. On behalf of Somerville Media Center, Somerville Community Access Television, and Some Arts, I'm Dave. Get out there, enjoy this awesome weather, and see some great stuff.
Mm-hmm.